Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing well. Um, today is a series introduction video to the Windows subsystem for Linux. Now, if you've never used it or heard of it before, like having a little mini Linux box on your Windows 10 machine. Uh, it's great for developers, it's great for people who want to learn a little bit of Linux, um, and it's really flexible. I use it all the time, every day in fact. Um, it's great if you work with Python or any other language. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to show you guys how to install it and get everything set up. So this is actually the bash terminal that comes with the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. As you can see, we can just enter our normal Linux command. So ls print working directory, we can go to our home folder run the normal kinds of commands that you would on a Linux machine. So, I mean, this isn't actually the default look. I'm going to show you guys how to style it and make it look a bit nicer because by default it's not all that great. So then, I'm uh, here in a Windows 10 virtual machine and um, first thing you want to do is head over to this URL um, or just search for install WSL and um, find this first search result. It's just from the Microsoft Docs. So the first thing really we need to do is just run this line in PowerShell. So I'm gonna go ahead, don't know if that copied, so I'm gonna copy that now and I'm gonna launch PowerShell um, as an administrator. So I think if you right click on that, yeah, run as administrator yes and what you want to do is just copy this line that we've just copied there and paste it in and hit return let that do its thing boom so we're done so we can close PowerShell I'm going to close that browser and down in the search bar here um, you can literally just search for the distribution that you want to install so for this example we're going to use Ubuntu um, so if you go ahead and search for that, and you can see you get it in the App Store. Um, I think there's a way you can search it in, um, where is it? I think it's Windows Store. So if you come up here and search for, let's try Linux. So you can see here, there's a few different distributions here that you can choose from. Uh, Kali Linux, Debian, Ubuntu. But for this example, and if it's the first time you've ever used it, I'd probably recommend just going with Ubuntu. So there we go, 18.04 LTS. So go ahead and click into that and install. Mm, can I get rid of this? Yep. Okay, so just let that go ahead and do its thing. Shouldn't take too long. And the cool thing is you can have multiple distributions running in parallel. So, you know, you can have one with Ubuntu, you can have one with OpenSUSE, you can have one with Debian. So let's literally go, actually, let's not launch it from there. Let's uh, launch it from here. Okay, now that might be quite small, so let me try and um, zoom in here. There we go. So this shouldn't take too long. I have had it in the past on these virtual machines, sometimes it kind of bugs out a little bit. But this should be exactly the same as what you would do on your Windows machine. So just sit tight and wait for that to happen. I'm not going to edit this video, so you're just going to have to sit through this.
Ah, okay. Here we go. So, put in your new Unix username. Do whatever you want. Stick a password in. Boom, and we're in. So we are now running Ubuntu 1804 in Windows 10. So there we go, just as you would on a normal Ubuntu machine. So um, go to the home directory. We got a bash RC, a dot profile. Awesome. So it's as simple as that. And while we're here, we may as well go and upgrade and update our packages. So sudo apt get update. Let's make sure we're all up to date. And once that's done, we'll run sudo apt get upgrade. Hit it white. Right, Are you still awake? We're finally done. It doesn't normally take that long. I think it's because I'm in a virtual machine. Um, but anyway, we are done. And um, we've updated the packages. And as you can see, it's just like using a normal Linux machine. Um, but a word of warning. <laughs> you don't want to access any of the Linux files using your Windows system. Um, it's hidden by default. So unless you go and configure some settings which lets you see some of these hidden files, you're not going to be able to access the files, um, your Linux files, from your Windows machine. And for good reason. Um, you don't want to. It can corrupt them. It can really mess things up. So in the next episode in the series, I'm going to show you how to configure your setup so you can work between both different systems. Um, you'll be able to work with files on your Windows machine from the Linux subsystem and vice versa. So you'll be able to use all your favorite editors like you would, you know, you could fire up VS Code, PyCharm, whatever you use um, to work with files which you can then access through the Windows subsystem for Linux. Anyway, I'm rambling now, so that's enough for this one and I will see you guys in the next episode.